Hi everyone, uh, my name is Preeti and these are my group mates Raina, Byron and Manjula. Today we are here to present our topic on conversation analysis and theory. Okay, before I start the presentation proper, let me just go through the content that we will be covering. First I will be doing the introduction to conversation analysis which is also known as CA. And then, uh, covering the important structures of conversation analysis, followed by Byron who will be doing the steps and methods of analysis, and lastly Manjula will do the applications of our uh, relationship between conversation analysis and HCI first, followed by the applications of uh, conversation analysis. Okay, firstly, what is conversation analysis? Um, when I was doing my research initially, I realized that I couldn't find a perfect definition for conversation analysis, which actually encompasses all of its aspects. So I realized for the benefit of us during the exam, uh, to give like all three definitions which I found, which, uh, which I feel that uh, are more relevant to this module. And I guess you guys can read this in your own time, because it's a lot. But uh, for the sake of this uh, presentation, um, let's just say that conversational analysis is the systematic analysis of the talks produced in everyday situations of human activities. Okay, this is fairly simple to understand, but what kind of systematic analysis are we talking about? Well, this is actually explained by my groupmate um, by Ren later on. So, uh, conversational analysis is basically the study uh, into the social actions that are involved in conversations and how individuals interact with each other via both verbal and non-verbal cues. So, in, I mean, both are equally important in the analysis. And lastly, the structures and sequences used in these interactions. Again, what structures and sequences are we talking about? Well, this is also explained by my groupmate Rainer after I'm done with my part. Okay. Uh, conversation analysis was uh, initially developed by um, Harvey Sachs in the late 1960s. And um, what was his aim? Why did he find it important to know or analyze conversations? Well, his aim was basically to um, discover how participants understand and respond to one another in their terms of talk, or in their terms of talk means like when it's their turn to talk. And, um, and it has a basic or a central focus on how sequences of actions are generated. So with this, I'll pass the time to Rena, who will talk about the important structures of conversation analysis. Thank you. So, uh, conversation analysis, from that our uh, research we have found that there are four structures we believe that is more applicable for us in the CR design. These are turn-taking, adjacency pairs, and subjective understanding and repair. So, what is turn-taking? Turn-taking, as the name suggests, is concerned with turns being taken between participants and how, they have, how um, people pass around the turns. For example, if I were to ask you a question, that will be indicating that I want you to answer, I'm passing the turn over to you. Um, or another way is that if I were to call your name while you are speaking, there will be an indication that I want to take over your turn and interrupt your interrupt whatever you're saying. However, the most common way of uh, indicating turn taking is through adjacency pairs. Um, but these are common pairs of sentences or words that occur together. For example, if I ask the class now, how are you all today? What will your answer? No one wants to answer anything. <laughs> Ryan, how are you today? Fine, thank you. Yes. So, <laughs> so that's my example of an adjacency pair. It's a common way of answering sub, of answering um, any phrase that's said. If I were to ask Byron, have you had lunch? It could be, I've eaten, I have, I'm full already, or maybe I'm still hungry. Any kind of this. So the, the whole point of this adjacency pair is that it helps to predict speech flow and, and limit the possible number of answers that a person can give out possible responses that can be given out and allows and helps to maintain intersubjective understanding between the participants of the, of the conversation. Um, so intersubjective understanding in simple terms just relates, to, refers to the context of the conversation, whether people understand what is being said previously by the other person. So like I mentioned earlier, have you had lunch? You're not going to tell me, oh, I'm doing, I'm paving or something random out there. So we do need this one, this one is important because it relates to mix and final structure, which is repair. Because if this is lost, we need um, the conversation will become irrelevant and no one will understand what's being said. So finally, the last structure that we believe here is repair. 
Uh, this deals with problems, like I mentioned earlier, with understanding, but it also deals with speaking and hearing. Um, speaking and hearing. Uh, what some ways that people, some methods that people resolve, uh, parroting or imply or guessing is an example of how people try and repair, um, try to re regain the intersubjective understanding of the conversation. And uh, well, on the other hand, that, I mean that's for the listener side. On the speaker side, I could be asking, I could be using examples, metaphors, similes, in order for you to gain a better understanding. So in the end, repair acts as a self reckoning mechanism in social interaction, so that you all will not be lost wherever, because wherever um, there's conversation going on. So now we learn about these four structures. How are they actually applicable to HCI design and you as a student of HCI? So Byron, what do you think of this? The answer to this question is actually very simple. You know, conversation analysis can help us understand natural language processing, which will help us to understand human inputs and our body languages. They will surely lead to better understanding of the human response and the possibility of making interactive responses. <coughs> With conversation analysis, we can create fully automated machines that are able to understand and make response to human responses and making a machine more lifelike and is able to talk it is able to act and talk like a human now I'm going to give you an actual demonstration but before I start I would ask your one question are you feeling very cold? no hungry <sighs> The reason I'm asking this question is because I'm going to tell you how a speech uh, transcription is do, being done. First of all, it needs to be recorded and then it will be transcribed. Why it need to be recorded? Because the whole conversation, if you are just listening to me alone, you won't pay attention to me. Unless you, unless you listen to our conversation a few times, then you will slowly begin to understand what I'm talking about and what you are responding to. And with this, I will show you a video which will show a conversation between two persons. You can do me a stock video, so... Pay attention to the, how they speak, such as the tone, intonation, exclamation, raise your voice. <laughs> Man, we've had some fun times. Absolutely. Hey, Amen. I've got something I want to get off my chest. Uh, sure. Go ahead. Well, a couple of months ago, I really needed some money, so I took $10 from your wallet. <sighs> wow. Okay, well... I know, I know. I shouldn't have done it, but I really needed the money. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I forgive you. It's, it's, it's no big deal. Okay, good. What a relief. Well, since we're on the topic, is there something you need to tell me? Nope. Oh, really? No, no nothing I can think of. Nothing at all? Mm, no. Oh, come on, man. Tell me something, please. I feel horrible. I just need to know that we can both make mistakes. Okay, fine, Mr. Whiny Baby. All right. Um, uh, mm, I killed a director once, all right? You happy? There. You what? I killed the drifter. No big deal. Nothing huge. Why would you do that? I don't know. I just wanted to watch him die. Come on. Jeez. Someone's curious. Come on, man. Cheer up. I'm just kidding with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thank God. For a second I thought, oh, but sometimes I feel the urge to kill again. Are... Are you kidding, or...? <laughs> Come on, man! Okay. <laughs> 
the reason I want to show you all this video is just to show the, uh, the difference in intonation, inhalation, exhalation, uh, pauses, etc. and rise and fall features as you can see from this slide. Yeah, so this is actually taken from Gil Jefferson in 1984, in the transcription system. So, the next slide I will show you how I actually transcribe the first 30 seconds of the video. <laughs> Yeah, just take a look at this. Do note that do note that I tried to make it as close as possible to what is actually heard instead of actually what's actually written. So I don't really care about the spelling, but I care about how it sounds. So I'll go into there will be things such as sure or will sure, which goes according to the slang, etc. So that you'll know in context of what's actually happening. And next I'll go into what uh, Rainer have already spoke about. The important structures and features of uh, cultural analysis, such as the business defense. From these two lines, we can see that A is indirectly asking if he could tell B something, or we imply that he could. This is an example of a question and answering pair. The next slide, we can see that uh, this is what, it, what inter intersubjective understanding is all about. So, B is responding to A regarding his answer. And B understood that we are both talking about the same subject, even though A didn't explicitly mention it. And finally, we will look at the repair structure. In this case, in these two lines, A uses a self-initial repair by using so followed by a drag. This is seen as a repair as the previous phase can I really needed some money can be followed by other phases which could be leading, such as I really needed some money, which is estimative in nature, or I lost some money in stocks, which is also estimative. Or can you lend me some money which is a request? <laughs> Hence the word so is to bring the conversation back to the main topic. So with this, I'll, I'll, ask you a, I'll leave you with a question. If a computer is able to understand a conversation and its features in context, then we'll be able to have a realistic two-way conversation with humans. Isn't that great? So next, I'll pass on to Manjula. He'll we'll talk about uh, how CA has been implemented in actual context. Okay, so I'll be talking about the relationship between uh, conversational analysis and HCI. As we all know, HCI is basically uh, involves the knowledge of seeking the knowledge of the user and uh, applying this uh, when we are designing interfaces for humans to use. So we have basically come up with four points as to how CA is related to HCI based on our research. Firstly, when given a behavior of uh, interest, CA can help in identifying, uh, identifying or rather isolating the factors that contributed to the occurrence of such uh, behaviors in humans. So in this way, we can use this when designing the interfaces. So next, uh, um, so next we can see that um, CA results can actually help the designer in predicting how the users will interact with new design. So most of the time, the designs are uh, based on how the conventional ways of how humans interact with the previous models of the same product. So this aspect is of CA is very useful when it comes to designing of system interaction events such as uh, menus, screens, chatbots, and search engines, etc. So uh, um, Next few points are like, the third point we found out that was uh, user behaviors across different uh, design iterations can be compared by the use of CA, which means that the uh, analyst doesn't have to uh, worry about which, uh, what system is being used or what, the, what kind of environment is actually being used. Then lastly, feedback for any system is, very, uh, is a very important factor. So through CA, a structured understanding of user behavior is achieved. And this can help designers understand whether the objective of the system is actually reached or not. Also, the main reason is that behavior can be verified better when compared to subjective responses such as questionnaires, interviews, etc., which might be uh, misleading sometimes. So, uh, let's look at the applications of conversational analysis in Hexia. The first example would be this chatbot called uh, Cleverbot. It's basically an application that uses artificial uh, intelligence to converse with humans. So the system basically takes in the user input and finds all the keywords and exact phrases in its database and matches it with the user input after transcribing and analyzing it. So and then it will respond in a way which is similar to how a human would respond. So uh, what are the aspects of CA that are being applied here? Basically we can see that turn taking is in place with this chat box. 
So once you enter a question, you uh, have to wait till the system responds to you. And till then, the text field there will be disabled, so you can't uh, answer the next question, uh, ask the next question till the system has responded. So in this way, it ensures that the terms between the human and the system are in place in order for the conversation to keep going. Oh, uh, so some of the customer service dialog boxes. Uh, usually say like please come again or like sorry I didn't get you in order to repair the conversation. So in this way it helps the user to ask the question again and continue the conversation. The next example would be Skype, uh, which is an application we all know is used for making voice and video calls. So basically people can converse using this application without having to be there uh, physically present. However, there isn't any proper turn taking here, meaning the system doesn't have any feature that facilitates the turn taking when two people are in a voice call. So, so the voices can actually overlap and as a result, they won't be able to hear what the other person has to say. So which cause causing more cases of uh, repair in this application. So one way where how this could be uh, improved is to identify which user is actually talking and then uh, like mute the non speaking uh, user until the this user has finished saying his part. So in this term, uh, so in this way the it relates to the aspect of repair and conversation analysis. So as you all have noticed for example in video call, uh, Skype actually prompts the user asking whether you can keep the video on or off in order to facilitate the conversation when the internet connection is actually weak. So uh, lastly, uh, CA is also used in the healthcare industry where which is um, between the doctors and patients. So it's evident that the success of this healthcare uh, provision mainly depends on the interactions between the doctors and patients. So the uh, selections in which doctors make in terms of how they design their terms, whether when it comes to the taking the patient history or conducting a physical examination or delivering a diagnosis or suggesting treatment options are likewise um, respons uh, responsive to the prior verbal behavior of Patients. So it has been seen from research that patients are more likely to take medication effectively if there has been proper conversation between the doctors and the patients. So the key idea of using CA in this area is to explore how communicative choices made by these doctors impact the quality of interactions in general and of patient participation in particular. Uh, so with this we have come to the end. Uh, Pinky will help us sum up everything. Hi. Okay, if there are three things that you guys need to take away from this presentation, it's those three. Firstly, the definition of uh, conversation analysis, which is the basic thing, followed by the important structures of conversation analysis. Can you all remember? Therefore, sorry? Okay, it's kind of easy, right? Just the name. I'm not even asking for the explanation. Okay, I can give you guys one repair. Sorry? I heard something. Guys, don't be scared. It's easy. I, mean, I know you guys know it. I'm not going to judge you. It's on the key. Yeah? Oh, look at my adjacent pairs. Adjacent pairs. And the last one? That's right. You guys are so smart already. Okay, the last one, uh, which is also the most important one, how is CA applied in HCI? We all know that, we all now know that CA provides a methodology which is important in the design of user interfaces, especially like those involving um, spoken languages like Skype when you're trying to chat with your friend. And uh, since uh, conversation analysis actually focuses on human-human participation, it also helps to enhance human interactions uh, when humans, I mean, when we or users are using computers. So basically, this is how um, conversation analysis is actually applied in HCI. So with this, I've come to the end of our presentation. Do you guys have any questions?